Hello everyone! Welcome archaeologists. It is Sunday night. That means it is time for the weekly dig for those new to the stream. This is a show where we talk about anime old and new. And um, tonight I have with me, I'm Brent. I have with me my fabulous co-host John. Hello everyone. And Steve. Hello. And today we are here to talk about First Squad, the moment of truth. Exactly. Um, which I stumbled upon more or less randomly um, and discovered it was a Russian finance co production between Russia and Japan to make a basically Russia themed anime. Yeah. And I was like, I've got to see that. I just have to see what that is. So that's exactly what it is. <laughs> And I'm glad you found it because yeah. it's quite eye quite eye opening. Was this not really yes. cool? Yes, it was. That's the thing. It's like why nobody talks about that I've ever heard anywhere. It wasn't even in the World War II mm -hmm. panel that like we had yeah. talked about. I'd seen a right. triad. Yeah, wasn't in there at all. I'm like, where was this? How did people miss this? <laughs> yeah, um, it's really surprisingly cool. Um, to talk about the storyline, um, it is set in, again during World War II. It's very much a Germans versus the Russians during World War II story. You weren't already aware. Not the best of friends in World War II. No. Um, definitely Feelings were hurt. Feelings, Things yeah. were said. Exactly. <laughs> um, land was invaded. Um, uh, and so, yeah, the so basic concept is um, um, it is about a young girl. Uh, and by the way, full-scale spoilers here. Like, There's a lot they don't tell you. That they're gonna yeah. you got to spoil the entire thing. Um, but a young girl who turns out to have psychic powers um, who had, was, was basically trained as part of this like, Esper unit um, in Russia. Um, it's implied partially as a response to uh, German um, research into the occult. Um, and she sort of reunites with her... Um, uh, well, she reunites with her unit, but she reunites with her, her commander, gets a, 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 a job to go out and basically stop a sort of demonic ghostly invasion uh, that will turn the tide of battle and kind of turn the tide of World War II. And she has to kind of go out on her lonesome and take care of that. Um, so that's the basic premise. You know, so yeah, World War II, kind of fantastical spirits, ghosts kind of stuff. Um, let's talk about just kind of the overall art style and animation first, since it is, after all, anime. Um, I'll say the... Like, the overall drawing, like, the, the visuals themselves, I thought worked quite well. Um, it's a somewhat um, muted palette, which I think works nicely. Uh, but the animation itself is not the highest budget in the world. Uh, like, it's fine. It's just um, typical anime, right? Like, it's... it's yeah. Dialogue it's scenes so well. are, are very simple. Yeah, and action looks it's great. It's better than G.I. Joe. It is definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but does it not seem like they put like their A team necessarily on the animation all the time? Um, but it's serviceable, definitely serviceable, and the action looks great. Uh, what were you guys' thoughts of the sort of the overall kind of concept and the uh, the visuals? Well, the visuals for me were were fine. It was almost like standard anime, not not bad by any stretch of the imagination. But it's you know we we've seen better, and this was. Um, 2009? Is I that right? Look that up. I'm not sure. Um, so it was, it was in the 2000s, I think. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. yeah. So there is that. The, the action sequences are good. Um, I was just kind of surprised by the politics of everything within the anime and without mm -hmm. the anime and with and outside of the anime that this thing was even made. Yeah. Um, so there there are many questions on that for me, um, but. I thought it was kind of interesting how it was just basically an Esper unit against basically a fictionalized version of the Thule Society yeah. for the Germans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, and it, the thing about this is that it's 50 minutes and it's got chock full of interesting ideas yeah. And, yeah. and concepts that I, you know, it, it, at, at the end of it, it felt, you know, they, they definitely left it at a point where it's like, oh, we could have more if we want. Oh, I, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and, and I feel like that if somebody wanted to come back to this and actually make this a series, they could and they could expound on all those ideas and concepts. It, it's kind of mashed together in this 50 minutes. Yeah. But it's but it's 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 like there's this promise of, oh, that's really kind of a cool idea. <laughs> you, you know, having yeah. having these this Russian Esper unit, which is kind of second rate to these like, you know, dramatic Thule society. We're going to call forth the demon and, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, and one of the things I appreciated about it was that this was definitely a Russian animation. It's anime. But this is Russian, right? This is not Japanese. Yeah. This is Russian. This, like they literally throw in just a couple of things just to say, "Hey, Japan's involved with this." They throw in a, a magical katana, which actually really doesn't do anything. No. <laughs> um, but it, but it's very Russian. I mean, one of the things that that, that made me go, "Oh," as John would say, "Good on you," mm -hmm. is showing them in the young pioneers mm -hmm. outfit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you know, which I thought, which you never see. Yeah. You know, outside of Russia, yeah. that's a, that's a it's the, by the way for those in general that don't know what that is. It's kind of like the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, but it was all melded together. Um, it and, would be the the communist version of the Hitler Youth. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a better way to put it. Yeah, um, and so I was just like, wow, okay. So there's like all these good concepts. Historically, there were some interesting things. I was talking to to Brent about this last night about the Battle on the Lake that actually happened during the medieval times. And there's actually a, a movie made in the thirties. It was a propaganda movie um, to that effect, because the, I think they were starting to figure out that, that, oh, you know, we might be going up against the Germans. So, you know, let's make this movie. Mm -hmm. And it just retells that story about the battle on the lake with, yeah. with Germans. So I, I, you know, yeah, I mean, it was interesting. And I'm really surprised that like a group of Japanese, I think Brent, you, you put it right when it was just like, that's why they did it. Oh, it's a contract. It, it, yeah, no yeah it's a contract because yeah. this is a Russian story and, and, and these and the Japanese just kind of animated it for them yeah. because right now, even in 2000, whatever, when the, they were making this, you know, they're still quibbling over those little <laughs> fishing rights islands out, you know, north of Japan and, and Russia. They're still quibbling Curial about those islands. Things. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the, no, neither side has forgotten 19, the, the war, 1905, and what happened in World War II. Because mm -hmm. actually, um, correct me if I'm wrong, John. Um, the anime takes place right before the Zukov offensive against the Japanese. Is that right? Am I getting that right? Uh, the the offensive, what uh, Golan and Goal was. Jeez, uh, it was 1940. 1940. Okay. Okay. So this is um, a little after that. So you had the Manchurian sort of issue where the the Quantum Army attacked the right. Russians, and mm -hmm. they signed off on, you know, a non-aggression pact afterwards, right before the Germans <laughs> attacked. Right. Like, <laughs> um, John in chat asked, and before we get to you, John, um, um, are there any echoes of saga, the Saga of Tanya the Evil in this? Mm. That, would you compare and contrast them? I I give it that conceptually other than purely the war element of it. Yeah, this is firmly and concretely grounded in mm -hmm. World War II, nineteen forty-two, Germans, Russians. Right. Mm -hmm. So where you have Saga of Tanya the Evil, it's got elements of World War II. It's also got kind of oddly World War One elements to it, and it's yeah. more fantastical. Oh. Um, and we should we should point out that the. Um, when these spirits come to attack, they are doing so without like appearing in front of everybody. Like right. the, the spirit attack does not actually like show up on the battlefield. So there's yeah. no like actual like demons showing up and attacking people with axes or anything. You just so, see the, the the end result of it. Like yeah, you know, exactly. yeah, so, so yeah, so there's nothing like supernatural happening, you know, yeah. in the world. Yeah. yeah, so you don't have like you know Tanya. You've got the mages <laughs> flying in with their with their flight kits and yeah. stuff. So this is. This is much more <laughs> realistically grounded. Yeah. For, yeah. <laughs> and a pioneer expert, you know, yeah, exactly. fighting an undead German demon guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I I liked the sort of uh, sort of dull coloration because this is mm -hmm. wintertime, mm -hmm. so you don't have mm -hmm. a, you know the, this 
uh, proliferation of very bright winter uniforms are usually fairly dull anyway. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this, I got the feeling, is supposed to be casting back to 1942 mm-hmm. so that it's supposed to be a little bit of bleached out kind of you know a little, yeah. little dull looking because it's almost like a memory of these things mm-hmm. um uh, it's i honestly think it's a shame that they didn't take this up and move on because they placed it at a time where the war is not over right right you yeah, have yeah. this one thing happen you get to see anin yerbe and and the the ss guys mm-hmm. like calling forth and you know that's not the end of it nope and it's like but this piece ends it's fine it's self-contained but it doesn't you know it's got so much more it could have done before and so much it can do after yeah and it's just like okay you know i i like the mechanical design i like the the battle scenes um i don't i'm not immersed enough in in russian uh interests and russian concepts where that maybe some of this stuff touched on things that perhaps i don't understand like the valley of gloom Mm-hmm. That the that the demons and ghosts are coming out of to invade the human world. I, yeah. I don't know whether that's just a convenient, you know, hey, where would these ghosts be? It's called Valley of Gloom. Yeah. Or is there like some Russian thing right. that talks about, you know, right. warriors yeah. of the past? They go to the Valley of Gloom before they pass over, or they they come back. Yeah. Something. I don't. I don't I'm not immersed yeah. enough in that to know exactly. So. Yeah. I assume uh, it was the, the Valley of the Shadow of Death. But, Prime, the biggest know, bath. Never mind. Right, yeah. and, and <laughs> maybe just you know, translated weird, but it, it could very well be some specifically Russian thing, like you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I, I thought it was a really interesting concept. I, I think they there really was some more information that they could have mined out of this and done things with it. But mm-hmm. obviously, once the funding for this was over mm-hmm. and everybody was happy enough to walk away, right? <laughs> um, yeah, this was um, uh, produced and written by two people, two Russians. Um, and there are a few other like Russian names on it, but it feels like it was basically them, you know, coming up with this and then I assume finding the financing and, and making it happen. Yeah. Um, it doesn't sound like it was some, you know, major production, you know, it, it was a, um, I mean, um, Vanity Project is, I think, the closest word for it, but I, again, I don't know what the, the actual monetary um, output is, but it certainly sounds like this was a one and done. Yeah. 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 And, boy, yeah, I am... I desperately want the TV series of this. Like this, this would just work yeah. so well as a as a as a as a story. Um, yeah, the but, the two uh, uh, looks like commissar kind of girls mm-hmm. who are not yeah. actually commissars. They're right actually here. working yeah. with the SS. And how do they get whatever? And how do they get orders? At one point, like, okay, you didn't do that. Well, head back to Moscow. I'll be like, oh, really? That easy, huh? Yeah. Just exactly. like, yeah. yeah. Just get in a car, go to Moscow. There's not like a yeah. front line, everybody yeah. dying everywhere. Yeah. It's the middle of winter. So I'm hello? glad you mentioned that because he goes, you're, you'll be in Moscow tomorrow. I was like, what? Yeah, that's not a thing. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was the not, German not dream, a... but that right. didn't happen. <laughs> 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 that's how things worked. Well, it, yeah. It, uh, yeah, I mean, there were, there were so much to this that, that you could expound on. And uh, like, you know, Mr. Rasputin, guy yeah yeah you know who's who's like who, who finds her after the 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 bombing of of the of the camp and um the and and he he just i was just like why is rasputin in here yeah and it, it's not it's not but he is definitely a mystic mm-hmm. and um he's you know, the grand metropolitan of the russian orthodox church uh, right. he's just hiding out in the cabin right now oh cool but there was there was definitely some interesting things like like for example when she's doing the show undercover for whatever reason mm-hmm. right before she has amnesia and, and from the bomb blast mm-hmm. you know she's doing the trick of I know your name I get because you know yeah. she's got the, these powers and then she takes the things off and she goes uh, so how long do I have to live and like everyone looks dead yeah. to her you know and you're yeah. just like you're like ooh. Three, yeah, there, two, I felt there was a one. missed opportunity on that, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, and there was, but there was, and what I also thought was really interesting, and, and it was kind of one of those things where it's like, obviously, when they were writing this, they put a lot of thought behind it, but it didn't really translate that well. But mm-hmm. I thought it was interesting. Was the idea is, is she's laying there dying that she's actually sitting in a movie theater? Yes. And this yeah. is how we get the back her yeah. backstory yeah. of like the her unit and mm-hmm. they're you know under the guise of young I pioneers, but you know this, and it's just kind of like and then you know at the end of it the guy goes, 
I'm dead. You're not go, go mm. ahead and go to the exit. Why are yeah. you doing this? Yeah. And then coming up with the idea of, um, well, we're going to resurrect your, you're going to resurrect your unit mm -hmm. because, you know, they were all killed previously. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you, we need you to go do the thing. And, and I love how they steampunk the, the whole yes. jury rig to get her to go into the undead, into the in between world of where, you know, spirits are to, to find her friends. But did you, were you guys also kind of like, uh, at the very end of it, when the battle is over, and they, you know, make the discovery, and she looks up around, and all of her friends are gone. Mm -hmm. Like one second they're just standing there, and the yeah. next second they're just gone. Like no talk, no nothing. Yeah. They're just gone. Because here's the thing. Yes, they should have disappeared. Right. Yes, it should have been abrupt. But I wanted a moment. Right. Yeah. I wanted a moment where she realized. You know, she comes up, she sees them around, and then they all like start to fade away. So right. she, she has that realization of, oh, right, you know. But yeah, it felt like they just right. jumped past it. Yeah. Well, did, did you guys get the sense that the dead demon, well, <laughs> the, yeah. the, re, the more dead, dead demons, um, <laughs> re-dead? Uh, um, when the sunlight hits them, they fade away. Mm -hmm. So I got the sense that that was a sparing moment because if you're going to commit to that where it's mm -hmm. like, oh, the fallen of these, these monsters mm – -hmm. They, they've come from the Valley of Gloom and they get hit with sunlight and they evaporate. Mm -hmm. It would be much to have her see her friends, have them hit with sunlight, and they're from the Valley of Gloom too. Mm -hmm. Even right. though they're good, mm -hmm. the last thing she's really going to want to see oh, is yeah. like <laughs> the guy she likes and he's like, mm -hmm. go on, live your... Right, just yeah. ashifies. <laughs> be like, oh God, that's horrible. <laughs> you know, versus yeah. they're gone, so mm -hmm. you almost could have like, ah, oh, oh, the virtuous dead. Mm -hmm. They right. have... The ones that yeah. evaporated in sunlight, they're truly gone. Mm -hmm. But her friends who are the virtuous dead, they've returned to the Valley of Gloom and or and or gone on. They're mm -hmm. they're done their right. part. Yep. And now they've moved on and yeah. I don't have to see them evaporate. Yeah. So. yeah. I would have liked to see that addressed one way or the other. Yeah. And not and nice. not necessarily like decided on, but just give us something other than they're just not there anymore. Yeah. Um but uh, but yeah. I, also, I will s oh go ahead. No, I just wanted to say that that the one thing that I was just like, I could tell this was very rushing, but but it was very off putting. Was mm. boy, did they make her angry all the time? Like not like rage angry, mm. but she was just angry the yeah. whole like her facial fixtures just anger through the, <laughs> through the whole thing. Yeah, and that is the mindset of that time for mm. the Russians because they were mm, life was not good at that time, but still it was just kind of weird just having just like. 14, 15 year old girls just be like, oh, okay. So, first off, time. So, two things. One, I actually really liked her sort of emotional um, palette throughout the, the, the story. Because one thing I like is that she's not the, I don't know what to do, I'm kind of being dragged along character. Right. But she's also not like Supergirl, you know, charging forward, doing things. And she's got a nice balance there. Mind blast. Mind yeah, exactly. blast. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mind she, bullets at yaks from 200 yards. Exactly. Yeah, it's definitely more like an Indiana Jones style. Like, oh, I guess we're doing this now. Okay, you know. Yeah. Gotta yeah. figure it out. Um, um, but <laughs> her squad is described as um, like this squad of like Esper teenagers. Um, she's a small 13. I just gotta say. Like, yeah. She, she's, she is quite petite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like she is half the height of her commander, um, so I'm like, that's interesting. And anyway, I don't know if that's one of those things where they're like, they're saying teen in the sense that it was majorly teen. She's like maybe twelve or something, um, but it just kind of arched my eyebrows. So she she is not presenting as you know, fifteen years old. <laughs> She's right. young, but, um, but yeah, it's interesting. Um, okay, not half the height. I will. I, I will. Still, um, and and I would love to see the story arc of how they got the swords. Yeah, yeah. This, like actually seeing, and actually, I think you know we were kind of joking about it earlier, but actually now that I think about it, I, I'm like, well, it'd actually be kind of cool to see the Thule Society, yeah, going after the sword at the bottom of this lake. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Like yeah. how they do that. Like like you know like in Hellboy, they they show mm -hmm. you know how they 
do the things, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it, would, it would be, you know, it'd be interesting to see what like combination of technology and magic that they use to, to go down and get this. And I desperately want an explanation as to why she has a katana and how they right. got it, yeah. considering that in World War II, they were, the Japanese and Russians were fighting each other. So I would like to see from the Russian point of view of like, this is how we got it. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, whatever. Which it could have been the yeah. border dispute around <clears throat> Manchuria that they picked right. it up, True. you know, the year yeah. or two prior. But yeah. we don't freaking know. No, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, oh, it, it there was, was an Omnioji in the Japanese ranks who fought uh, Zhukov on the border, and this Omnioji tried to call forth, and they got killed. And blah, we took their sword. Like, yes, yeah, okay, tell me, give yes, me that. Yeah, I want yeah. some of that. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of weird, given that we we knew quite a bit about the other sword, like the sword they used for Von Wolf, yeah, the, the, the yeah. guy, and then. Like, they, like she just opens her locker and they're like, "There's a thing for you in here," and there's the, the samurai sword in there, and like she pulls it out with recognition. Yeah. Yes. And like she opens it, closes it, so like she knows what this is. So I thought it's odd. Uh, and again, I don't want the full backstory here, but just right. you know, if somebody just said, you know, "Yes, that is indeed the Muramasa blade," or whatever. Right. Was there uh, something written on the blade? I, meant, I could I, not know. I thought it was a I dragon. Sure. I thought it was just a dragon. I was going to say, because when she opened it, there's something in the the, mm. the pattern of the blade. And I wasn't sure yeah. whether, because it's not her reflection, because she opens it looking at the camera, and you're seeing the yeah. back side of the blade. Mm. Mm -hmm. Unless no, it's a I, misunderstanding I it's... of how mirrors work. Just possible. <laughs> mirrors, how do they work? Um, yeah. I, I, th I, mean, I thought it was a dragon, but yeah, I could uh, be wrong. Yeah, I, I don't. I thought it might have been something written on it. But well, well they it. and they say to her, they say, and you're going to have something, and you know how to use it, right? Like just like just basically mm -hmm. a way of saying, you know, Luke, use the force. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. trust yourself. Yeah, yeah, here's this blade. You know yeah. how to use it. Trust. Just, yeah, they're pioneer training. Yeah. I saw a lot of like riflery and like blindfolded like obstacle course crawling. I miss yeah. the entire like ghost katana fighting scene. But. Yeah, <laughs> and it's quite possible that you know that was a scene they planned for that didn't work out. Mm. You know, they had to be. cut that mm -hmm. little that moment for whatever reason. Right. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was kind of odd. Um, but John and Chad, I, I completely agree. It's coolness factor. Right. It's, it's right. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's certainly yeah. true. Um, Better than a giant hammer. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> no. You know, a rocket hammer. Cool. Mjolnir. There we go. But somehow the Soviets captured Mjolnir. <laughs> a, little, a, little, a little petite 13 year old girl. <laughs> <boy. laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, interesting story. I will also say I really appreciated the overall pacing and structure mm -hmm. of this. Like, yeah, it moves from scene to scene, moment to moment, always adding, always building, always giving you a little bit more. Um, it never feels... It, it drags <coughs> a bit when she meets her commander uh, and they're walking through the hallways and we get very much a pointer scene of, you know, well, let me explain everything that happened in the past six months, right? Um, but in general, like I, I think this was uh, pretty pretty well structured. Yeah, you just reminded me of the spirit radars. Yeah, those are kind of, yeah. Those Beautiful. are like like they don't really give you much of an ex explanation of anything about them. They just no. look cool, you know. It's just yeah. like oh, and our spirit radar indicates that there's a massive force of magic happening here, and this is where <laughs> we need to be. And I'm like going, oh. Okay, and mm -hmm. are we powering this with the souls of the tears Probably. of dead of orphans? babies? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, what, what are well, we I just love here? the idea of taking the oscilloscopes, and it's like they didn't do anything like crazy, like out of control, because there were oscilloscopes at the time, yeah. right? You know what I mean? It's like there was radar. There. That's that's yeah, that's that's a funky thing to do. There was you know there was television. 1936 right. uh, Olympic right. Games in Berlin were broadcast yeah. to television parlors in Berlin. Right. Um, and select cities, apparently. Um, so it's like, it's just neat to see the way that they incorporated that kind of like very over <laughs> overbuilt kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like, damn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, but you know what, what was nice about that was that um, it fit the time period. So it wasn't yeah. like you had, like you opened this room and it was like all stark white and, you know. It, it very much looked like 
here's the here are the circuits we cobbled together and yeah. to p- yeah. put the thing and they're because they're all uniform like they're the, all the machines are uniform yep and so you know it's just like okay this is very utilitarian you know boom this is what it does mm-hmm. and here it is and we're not gonna have a whole room white room dedicated with some guy with glasses in there with with a clipboard going okay this is how this works that is this well, is also, okay this is a okay. 19th century building that they, yeah. you know, they commandeered a hallway for this right thing. yeah yeah well i also enjoy the juxtaposition of the woman who's typing yeah and then you've got this the spirit monitors <laughs> right where it's like you know you're you're absolutely right steve you could have done this like oh Soviet Union has like captured alien technology and we've got this you know room that's like so super futuristic and you know we've got you know computers now that nobody else knows about We're so, no, no this is all like entirely plausible except for the spirit monitors um it's all entirely <laughs> plausible mechanically and uh at at its given time mm-hmm. you know it's right. like okay gotcha yeah. gotcha yeah like they're using period era headphones with yep. the spirit monitors. It's like, oh, yep. gotcha, right. yeah, yeah, you have. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that, yeah, that's really cool. It's actually one of the one of the really cool things about this, I think, is how they they mix just enough fiction in with the fact. Um, yeah. Like they say that their um, um, their unit is is fighting against the um, um, Ananerbe? Ananerbe. Ananerbe, um, which is the uh, uh, German organization devoted to uh, the Aryan superiority you know, concept, yep. except that in real life they were basically just an archaeological group. They were not involved yeah. in any right. supernatural yeah. like investigation. Yeah. Um, they were looking for the, the the spear of Longinus, but they did you know they weren't like trying to call forth anybody <laughs> exactly. with it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, Cthulhu, even that, come up to our side. Yeah, and yeah. it's one of those things where apparently like a lot of folks have confused. That organization with the organizations that were like, oh yes, clearly these things exist, and we're going to find them. Um, and so I think they're kind of playing off that idea that you know we're not trying to be period historically accurate about every organization. We can have our own little mythology within this. That that organization right. is actually you know full of guys in cloaks in a giant room. You know? yeah. <laughs> the big rune on the table. Ula tech. Ula Ula tech. tech. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, the the lovely notion that it's like you have a you have a thing as the catalyst to to call forth a powerful demon, mm-hmm. and then ask it to do things for you versus it being like, "Thanks for awakening me. I'm going to harvest you all." Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I would have also loved to have seen that. Like, oh no, mm-hmm. the the Anandere Society and oh, the SS yeah. have called forth a world destroying demon. Mm-hmm. The war has to stop. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> now demons are pouring forth. Yeah, and so sort everyone of like just strike witches in the Neroi. Yeah, uh, it, yeah it's uh, yeah. I, it, you could see that, like going uh, the Germans going, okay, world. Um, uh, how to explain this? We're trying to. We kill would you say all. sorry. Well, we're trying. We would <laughs> say sorry. Not really. Not really yeah. sorry. We are trying to kill you all um, and take over everything and make it in our image. Um, but we did this really bad decision. And um, so we're going to need your help, and then we'll go back to killing each other. Okay? Yeah. So, but for the most for the, for the most part, because here's the footage of, of the guys who conjured the demon, and it's just it just ain't. Pretty. <laughs> it's all blood. It's just all blood. <laughs> um, oh, ooh. Well, and that is the premise of Gun Parade March and Gun Parade Orchestra. Um, yeah. Indeed. That, uh, that. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah that the, the Nazis open a portal to the world of basically the aliens from Alien, and let them in. Oh God. <laughs> and it's like bad choice. <laughs> Yeah. Um, we did not properly research this. <laughs> Wikipedia was wrong. <laughs> Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. <laughs> it's the perfect organism. Um, yeah. <laughs> For destroying humanity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good job. I mean, granted, there was the. Um, what was the. the um, was it, it wasn't Wayland Utani, was it? The. Um, the company that, that, that um, in Alien. Wayland, uh, Wayland, um, Wayland, um, shit. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Wayland, um, no, it was Wayland Yutani. Yeah, okay, okay. Cool. Wait, yeah, it was Wayland Yutani. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they thought they could control the alien, right? They, they were there on a, a yeah. they were there to bring it back. Uh. Yeah, I guess it's yeah. possible. Uh. Think of all the corporate applications you can do <laughs> with this thing that just murdered the entire crew of a starship. 
Um, should we really bring that back? Think of the profits, Bob. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wow. You'll be over there. <laughs> uh, Don't worry. We have it in this really great cage that we spent as little money as possible. Yeah, yeah. Right over here. What You'll be possibly, safe. Et <laughs> yeah, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> oh, God. Um, so, yeah, so getting back to the first squad. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. This is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Now, I do want to ask you all a question. Which may or may not become a regular question. It's not the question we're going to ask at the end of the show. Um, um, if you were the director of this, what would you have done differently? Assuming it still has to be, you know, basically the same length, basically the same, you know, concept. Would you do, would you have done anything differently on this? Well, I mean, if we had to keep it to the same length, yeah, um, yeah you know, then the choices become different. Because the, the thing that the immediate thing that would have come to my mind would have been to make it a short OVA, three, four episodes, because I think that would have worked mm -hmm. um, to, to, exp to explain things. <laughs> um, I think I, I think the thing that I probably would have changed is what I said earlier, is somehow, some way, try to devote time into the importance of getting the sword mm. out of and why that why the sword was the catalyst mm. for for calling the demon and i would oh, it's so it's so hard because it's so, it was only like 50 minutes yeah, yeah. um the, either that or spend more time with the pioneer unit mm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i can see yeah, that. so you so you build because that's something that comes back yeah. And in, and when you reach the end of the, of of the 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 episode or of the movie, and you realize, oh yes, we can go further with this, mm -hmm. you want it to spend more time with those characters. Yeah. Like, you know, there's the big guy who can handle, you know, the the the, the was it the the M four whatever M it was MG forty two. Thank you. With like practically one hand, um, and and he's he's actually doing a really good really job good. by holding yeah. the bipod to the side to stabilize the front. Yeah. Right. Actually, can do that. Cool. Now, mind you, that's a hell of a lot of ammunition to carry. It's a very heavy machine gun, but you know, if you're buff, it's yeah. Buff There's that, you know, the kind of the leader boyfriend, and and you know, the girl, um, the one girl who <clears throat> had braids, and then she had the weird like which. Witch Hunter Robin kind of yeah. thing going on. Well, she, Steve, she was dead. Which gave a break. <laughs> and the little guy, I still don't don't get the little guy. Yeah. Um, I, you know, whatever. But but just you know, just kind of, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just but just you know, a little bit more of of that, so that you can feel more of like when they do disappear, just do the but you know, mm. disappear like oh, mm. and this they're just like oh, oh okay, all well, that kind of stuff. Mm. Yeah, mm. I hear that. John, I mm, there's so much, right? There, uh, there is. If, but if I'm if I'm limited to the 50 minutes that I've that I've got, yeah, I, mean, I, you I add a few minutes here and there, right? It doesn't have to be exactly yeah. the same length, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd like certainly more uh, connectivity. We know how she meets leader of the the first squad. Mm. Um, but we don't have a lot of development about the other elements of her squad. We see them in training. You know, but we don't have like a, a great sense that she's bonded to all of them as much as she is to him for mm. obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's like I would like to see more fleshing out of that because then, you know, as Steve was saying, like when you get to the end and they whoosh, they're gone, yeah. that you'd have a more poignant moment of like, ah, oh, but I'll see them again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Something like that that gives you that little that piece at the end. Um, I'd like to see more battle. I, I okay. mean, just yeah, honestly, with, you know, that, that's blowing up the, uh, yeah. the the traveling circus that she's in, where she's you know picking out people who you know, mm -hmm. what's your name? When am I going to die? I would, you know, I'm not a horror fan. You know, I'm not a Jujito right. fan per se. <laughs> I'm not a Yamashiba <clears throat> fan necessarily, but I would love to see other moments where her Esper skills pop in. And like when she's talking to the guy who's like the leader of the troop, and like half of his head's like gone, mm -hmm. 
and she's just kind of like, uh, and it's like, I, I would like to see more of that just because that would be really interesting to see her, you know, mixing and mingling among people. And like, there's the guy from the moment of truth who's not dead. Mm-hmm. And then there's right. all these other people. And it's like, you know, what are, what are those? Does that give then the sense of he was this moment of truth mm-hmm. out of these 500 people she's now seen? Right. There's 60 of them that are not dead. Mm, mm. Is this like a perpetual fight? Mm. Did we stop this moment of truth, but now 59 other moments of truth that right. this sure, this is going to keep like being a factor in this? Yeah. So I'd like to see some more of that kind of stuff. And mm. it's like... Uh, mm. <laughs> you, you brought something up actually that I didn't think about, <clears throat> which was um, the fact that... This film was in Russian. Okay, right, Steve. <laughs> oh, oh, my, oh my God. And somehow I understood. Um... No, uh, that uh, she actually has a degree of lack of control oh, yeah. of this power, absolutely, and which which shows in that scene, and and that would be something as you would see like in the series, mm-hmm. that would definitely be something that would be addressed. You yes. know, like how do you cope with that? How she how she right. overcomes that, and how that how that makes her better? Yeah, if she's tired better. and she's worn out, right. does that mean she she isn't able to filter things? Because right. we saw her in the back of the truck, she's kind, you know, she's mm-hmm. sticking to herself. She's kind of distraught. So does that does that leave her vulnerable to the strength of her power? Yeah, I, right. And you know, as we see later, you know, she she's trying to bring them forward, and she doesn't know if it worked. Yeah. So she, she definitely right. doesn't have the the full control of her power. That's absolutely right. Um, I changed the ending. Um, not the basic content of the ending. But, um, again, spoiler alert, um, there's a really neat moment in the ending where th- they, they realize they've, they've killed the main dude. Um, one of the other guys throws the sword away as all the like, zombies and ghosts basically are, are, are leaving. And one of them catches the sword and takes it back with him. And it's like, an, oh, that's interesting. Like, I didn't expect right. that. And then you find out that they didn't act that the the ghost demon thing that they killed was not actually Von Wolf. Yep. And that he had gotten out. And I'm like, but he was literally the guy leading the charge in the armor thing. And like that's who you saw in the original thing cutting off the guy's head. That should be the moment of truth. That's not a fair bait and switch. I I really I, don't like that kind of thing. Um, I would have had him be dead, but then realize there's tons of other dead people who are more than willing to take up that, that, that charge. Yeah. And so, yes, you've, you've right. gotten, you killed this one, but that doesn't mean that the, the, the fight is over. Somebody else is just going to do the same thing, you know, six months from now with that sword. Right. Um, and you could have done a cliche thing and just had, you know, them pull his helmet off and him look at them and be like, Death is only the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? And then be like, oh, right. crap, what does that mean? <laughs> you have you... only made me strong. Yeah, yeah. if you oh, kill a dead it. thing, do you bring right. it back to, oh, yeah. crap. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like we were talking about, I, I would have changed that moment when it, they all disappear. I would have made it just more dramatic, uh, punch it up more, um, yeah. give me more. Yeah. In fact, that would be the moment to add the flashbacks. You know, mm. when he dies, she looks up, and then you see that moment with that character. <clears throat> then you see yeah. that moment, perhaps. The, the little guy probably doing something laughing with the girl right. doing something, you know, yeah. a that's, tender moment with the boyfriend. Yeah. And, you that's know, whatever. when you reveal yeah. that there's a love triangle between the, the, you know, the younger boy and the older boy, right? And like there's a whole right. other level of stuff going on there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just felt a little, a little too rushed for me. Um, but again, like, I think the overall content of it, the whole idea of this, the fight on the, on, you know, on the ice and like, you know, her having to bring them back and all that stuff, all of those beats, I think, work really well for me. Um, I like, I, I particularly like how everything literally stops and they're fighting in like a moment, frozen moment in time. Yeah. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, Which, I mean, they did a good job on that, too, explaining like, oh, well, you know, there's no way for average people to fight against these things. They can't yeah. see them. Mm-hmm. Where it's yeah. like, okay, that makes sense that there's this stop moment mm-hmm. if you recall back to that one comment. Yep. So it's mm-hmm. like, yeah. not that I, I want you to, you know, like Steve with, with the two by four, right. you can't <laughs> yeah. see them. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, you have to 
have paid attention to hear that to then make that time stop like link in with things yeah yeah mm -hmm. so um, I but also, I, sorry go ahead I, was gonna say, I, I also wanted um a little more denouement of you know i want to see her going back to her commander and him saying you know um welcome back because you are now the leader of the new first squad Right. Right. And here are your recruits, basically. And we're spending all that like okay, she's earned that. Right. Now we, we do right. that. Yeah. Um, and we know that that's a durable squad because they actually have a squad signifier, they actually yeah, yeah, yeah. have a squad right. thing going on. So yeah. she isn't just the you know, oh there was only one. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> right. the first squad there was only one. Sorry guys. Mm -hmm. Now it's all done. Like yep. no. All of know. this that we spent money on is to support a 13-year-old girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> like, that would be the thing, is that she comes back and, and he says, welcome to Second Squad. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you end it. Yeah. yeah. But I think they were trying to, you know, yeah. as you said, it, was, it felt like they were trying to hustle to the end. I, I think they were certainly Russian. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, I did the thing for the week. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. The jokes don't get better, but they get more frequent. <laughs> um, oh, dear. Yeah, I, I completely agree with all of you that, uh, oh, gosh, I want a series out of this. I'm, I'm yeah. desperate for a series out of this. This, this, could, this yeah. actually really could be a really good, Absolutely. Really good thing. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many elements of this that just work so well. I would love for them summoning, <laughs> summoning back the first squad as being, that's not an episodic thing. Uh, it should happen. But that should be, you know, that should be your se your season finale, right? Is right. it's yeah. that bad? I need to pull these back, which gives you the episode to kind of again fill back in the details on what it was like yeah. with First Squad, all those sort of characters. So that she gets like that that, you know, those five minutes with those characters again, very briefly before they have to leave. Yeah. Well, Brent, here's an archaeological question for you. Mm. Given the time period that this was made, given that the the writers of this were foreign writers, mm -hmm. how? How interested was the Japanese animation industry in picking up stories from foreign markets to make more domestic animation? Depends on how much they paid. You know? hmm. um, it's certainly it, open to it. We have plenty of examples of co-productions, um, you know, the, the ubiquitous French co-productions with anime studios right. uh, you're going back decades. Um, I think that there, there's... I've never heard of a studio being close to the idea. Like, we, we will not do that. Um, well, and, I mean, buying the story is not co-producing with – like, so not going back to the, the Russian oh, writers and Russians okay. and saying, hey, you know, let's do oh. another uh, collab. No, literally going and saying, we want to – hi, Russian people. You wrote this stuff. We want to buy it. Oh, gotcha. Interesting. And now we're going to go back to, or to you know, yeah. Studio IG. And we're just now we're going to run with this. We bought yeah. the rights to the story. We've got this. We've got this framework. We have this film, and now we can just build off of this. And now we're going to make the manga, problem. and then we're going to make the light yeah. novels, and then we're going to do a live action. But, and that's the thing. Yeah. It's like, but at that time, and put it period, on Netflix. Yeah. Were they? It's because it's only been within the last couple of years <clears> that we've <throat> talked about where it's like, oh, such and such studio is allowing submissions internationally right. yeah. for a story right. competition. It's like it seems like those international submissions have only been yeah. more recently You're so right. at that time would it have been something where the russians could have been like hey we'll sell you the story will you make it yeah you go ahead so i i think you i think you i think you have two limiting factors here okay. um you have the fact that for a studio it is very difficult for them to come up with the money to license something right. and it is more in their self-interest to come up with something, something on their own that they can license and make money off of girls and Ponzer being the classic you know, example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if you're one of the publishers that you know, has the manga and does that and finances you know, half the anime out there, you have no incentive to, to use a foreign product because you got right. 28 ongoing manga right. that you can, you can license for things. So I think there, there's, just, there's no compelling reason. They certainly could, but there, there's nothing like driving them to say, oh yes, this, this would be right. a great decision. Okay, gotcha. Sure. Yeah, because there's some gems out there that you could. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I would love. Let's start a petition. You know, 
we know how effective online petitions are. You couldn't even say it with a straight face. Um, but, Let's uh, try a Kickstarter campaign. There we go. Well, yeah. A lot of money, you know, for, for that. And then we'll make it work somehow. We'll just make it work. <laughs> insert phase one, insert money. Phase three, profit. Yeah, yeah. What about phase yeah, two? Yeah, yeah. Uh, phase one, phase Question, three. Right? Uh, so phase two is they're working on it. And what's it called? The worst isekai ever. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's, and this is the interesting thing is, here's a good example of like, the problem is I want to, um, I want a series, but then that's way more expensive. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. betting, scraping, pulling together the money for a, however, you know, an hour long, um, film for the animation budget here is, I mean, it's not billions of dollars, I'll bet. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm sure they could, they could make that happen. Um, TV series is a whole other ballgame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any final oh, well. thoughts? It was definitely worth the squad watch. chibi version. <laughs> <laughs> that would be controversial. <laughs> and make all the the demons and stuff like little squishy, sort of like <laughs> Hu Tao ghosts. There we go. <laughs> Much more marketable. Oh, that way. how fun! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that would be the way they'd do it. They'd make just like a cutesy like. Three minute episode, you, you know, like yeah. Um, first squad, junior high, you know. <laughs> Everyone's dead. <laughs> the opposing, the opposing school next door. It's all the Nazis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and they're all they're all competing to go to nationals in like some ridiculous sport. Yes, in, in badminton. In Syria. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Jousting. Esper, Esper chess. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Very strategic. My oh, oh, um, uh, what was the, what was the show? Baka and Test. Um, no, Baka to Test. Yeah, Baka yeah, Test, yeah. yeah. Where they're, 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 you know, they have to battle each other in the hallways to like rise up in ranks in the school. Yep. Just do that, you know, summon your, yep. your, your dead comrades to, you know, <laughs> to, to improve your class's ranking in school. It works. Class 1-3 is going to become class 1-1. One, one. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go back and watch more of that show. That is just, it was such a fun show. Um, I should also point out before before we end, um, um, I don't know about you guys, um, I watched this in the Russian. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Um, there is an English dub. Um, yep. I actually kind of want to watch it now because it's got um, a bunch of like really top-notch voice actors in it. I mean, Bryce Patrick. Really? I, I didn't even look. I yeah, didn't, Bryce Patrick is not really Morris, Phineas, and um, Marat, wow. I'm not sure that is, is played by Tony Oliver. Wow. Rick Hunter in Robotech. Um, yeah. And Damn. A bazillion other things in anime. So, yeah, it's just huh. impressive. And Tony Randall. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. What? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Carrie, Car uh, Carrie Karaninen, I think. Um, but, uh, yeah. Carrie so, Grant. Yeah. Uh, so... If you're interested, there is an English dub, but that's kind of more your preference to the Russian dub, and I have no idea how good they did on that. <laughs> I can't tell. Oh, with my perfectly uh, pitched Russian, ah, it was great. It go. was the best. Good to know. Good to know. Um, cool. Yeah, that is First Squad, the moment of truth. Um, available somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure you can find it um, if you look hard enough. I think it is around. Um... Like Actually, right stuff or stuff like that, and their their DVD that, bargain think, bin. <laughs> um, let me just double check. Um, yeah. Regions oh, actually, it's in the bin. Wow, um, it's on YouTube, as in like rent on YouTube. Right? Oh, oh, okay. Um, wow. It's on Tubi. It's on Amazon. Uh, it's on oh, wow. Google Play. So, really? So oh, yeah, uh, rent for two bucks, buy for six on <clears> Amazon. Cool. Nice. Yeah. And cool. Tubi's free, I think, isn't it? Uh, yeah, free with ads. Yeah. Yeah. So hey, wow. check it out. It's there. Cool. Nice. Good news. Not just your bargain DVD bin at the local gas station. <laughs> nice. Exactly. And it was licensed and brought over here by, um, brought over to the uh, to North America by uh, Mug Entertainment. Nice. There was a uh, 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 a release. For a brief second, I thought you were really going to say U.S. Mango Corp. <laughs> Oh, oh, memories, memories. Oh, I was yeah. hoping you were going to say mm -hmm. gas prom, but mm -hmm. I, that's probably not right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, does any money go back through the, the channels now? Oh, like if, if, you, if you buy yeah. that, kick, you know, are there any royalties going going across that uh, that great economic divide at the moment? I don't know. 
Good Maybe question. it's held held in uh, in uh, uh, trust yeah. for a, a <laughs> <Possibly>. future <laughs> thawing of relations. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Um, yeah, that's first one. Really cool anime. It turned out. Thank you for for finding it. You're welcome. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Appreciate it. Fun when these things when you come across these things. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back in just a few minutes. To talk about the latest anime news. See you then.